how do I do this? Okay, I think it's recording now. Okay, cool. Um, and I don't really know what to do with this. Like, I don't know where this is going, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just finished it. I want like, like, yeah, what are you feeling right now? <laughs> ah, um, what do I feel right now? Right now, I, f I feel mostly betrayed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just like. Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn my fan off and get that together. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the event that we share this with them that that we share this with someone else, we should probably like say some stuff. So like who are you? Yeah. I'm Reed Jordan, huge sci-fi nerd. Cool. I'm Lawrence Barner, the second, and I'm an <laughs> aspiring sci-fi nerd. I used to be a sci-fi nerd like when I was little and yeah. I got back into it in the last two or three years. Getting back into the game. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Coming back home, if you will. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I just finished Octavia Butler's Dawn. Yeah, gifted to me graciously by you. <laughs> <laughs> and when did you finish? I finished it at the beginning of middle of June. Um, so it's about a month ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I finished like forty minutes ago. <laughs> Um, and I feel betrayed. <laughs> or I, I don't know. Okay, so they're going to be a, a million spoilers. Like we're not going to not spoil. Yeah. Um, so the the book ends with Lilith. Like not only has she helped. I don't know Nikanj. Yeah, that's how I pronounce it. Um. Only has she, has she helped Nikanj like do this healing that no Owen Kali has ever been able to do, but she is pregnant. Yeah, the first kid, like the first human. Yeah, Kali, like child. Yeah, and it's Joseph's kid. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and like, I feel. Like I want to throw up. Like I definitely feel like I want to throw up. And I also, the reason I feel, I don't know. My weirdest sensation is that I want to know what the kid's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> like how many tentacles it's going to have. <laughs> or like, you know, it's dead. like it's going to be, like it's going to look like you and Joseph until it matures. Oh, I didn't remember. I remember that part. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, no, it's going to be totally like that. Oh, my until, gosh. Until maturity or uh, until meta metamorphosis, I think is what they call it. Oh, um, yeah. And then I'm like, what the fuck is going to happen for that kid's puberty? Yeah. So I don't remember. Was it consensual, the pregnancy? No. Okay. Not. Yeah. They like took just his DNA. Yes, it, it took Joseph's DNA, and then I can't remember exactly. Like, I think it was, it might have been during the healing. Yeah. It's so like, you know, Nikanj gets his, one of his sensory arms almost cut off. Or its sensory arms almost cut yeah. off. It. Yeah. And there's, like, this healing process that happens. And I think that's when the pregnancy, like, that's when the sperm right. was implanted into Lilith. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I think everything about this book is about like non consent. 
like there's so many layers of non-consent in the book and like one of the things I keep I remember like over and over again is like how like a tricky consent can be um, when there's like so many different layers of like consciousness and like influence on you. Um, but I guess that like last part is like totally not like there's no like subtlety about it. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Though that is I, I've very much like picked up on that like consent non consent conversation or yeah. like the, the theme like you know when you're trapped on a ship like when you're on an alien spaceship and the aliens want you to do something like yeah consent is manufactured consent yeah but when you like i feel like there's one layer of manufactured consent that's i'm saying yes but i want no yeah and there's another layer of manufactured consent that's like well, I'm wanting the future of something. Yeah. So I'm going to say yes to this current thing. Yeah. Like, I want to get to Earth. So right now I'm going to say that I want to go, like, do this weird lovemaking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Nikanj and Joseph. Um, and then there's another layer. Like, for me, the deepest layer, it's like the, it's like the inception type of consent. Where it's like, yeah. well, I actually believe yep. that I want this yeah. thing that my captors have said they want. Yeah. That is, like, I think a huge part. Like, I'm not sure if you like, heard, like, the three faces of power. Like, yeah, totally. Yeah, like, that's the third face. I'm like, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've never heard it as faces. I feel like I've just heard it as types of power, but, like, can you just like mm -hmm. explain how you understand that so I can see if it lines up with mine? Uh, yeah, so the first face of power, if we're just talking about like very simple two-party thing is that there's some specific arena or issue where two parties enter and one party gets their interests met and the other party doesn't through some sort of expenditure. Um, this face is where like the very sort of arena or issues don't come up that one party wants um, because another party has dominated that arena or has some sort of agenda setting control. Um, so like the party that doesn't get what they want, they still know what they want, um, but they just don't have any avenue to like express that grievance or to make it um, reality. And then like the third phase would be, you know, party A is able to influence party B's very desires and thoughts. So that's party A and that's party B, basically. And so, yeah, I, mean, I think it's like all three in <laughs> like this book, but the third one's definitely like terrifying. And like the entire like, gene exchange basically seems like the yeah. like, third face of power, like on steroids. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that is the same thing I was thinking about. So, yeah. I didn't realize it was called that, that faces were the right word. Um, I think I've heard it as dimensions. Dimensions? That's how, yeah. Um, but I'm Googling now and it looks like Stephen Luke's. Yeah, I think that's what I read. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, and he has a dope book about power that I just put on my reading list, actually. Oh, I think I saw that in your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, power, a radical view. I was yeah, like, yo, yeah, it's that in my brain. <laughs> it's really, really good. You read it. Yeah, we read it for uh, Justin's urban sociology class. Okay. Um, we were in the, yeah, and Santa Folk, and, like, everyone in the class, was, like, the most heated discussion we had. Because, like, you just so, it's such an incredible, helpful lens to, like, understand your life and, like, name things that happen to you. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. And, like, recognize points when, like, we use, like, second and third phases of power. So it's not totally, I feel like, um, this empowering, you can be like, oh wow, this is something you can yeah. use. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that reminds me, I want to send you my friend Cindy's new book on power. Oh, it came out a couple months ago, and it's like about learning how to understand power, learning how to shift yeah. power, and then like 
learning how to play games that power so that you can practice it yeah like, in one-on-one -on -one setting so then you can like shift it out in the world yeah. anyway back to don yeah <laughs> uh do you remember how you felt when you finished um i'm trying to remember i think Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember like I remember feeling the most about it was Joseph, right? That's his name, but his but his death and the way that like the humans basically started to like behave and react in the way that the Ankli, how you call him? I, in my, um, I was saying Oan Kali. Oan Kali, like they started behaving and acting the very same way that Oan Kali, like were terrified would happen, um, of like yeah. hierarchies and power and domination. Um, it kind of felt like they had anticipated all this and like designed all this to happen, knowing how humans mm. would behave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have so many thoughts. Like. Yeah. So on that on that tip, you know, I'd say on one level, like I don't know if I agree that like the Owen Kali had. I mean, you didn't say this concretely, but like, I feel like there were moments. That the Owen Kali like actually didn't know that humans would go as far as they did or like do. Yeah. Like I forget who was that. Like there was an Owen Kali that got like slashed in the chest pretty bad. Um like before before Nikanj had gotten that before Nikanj got hurt, there was another one that I forget who it was, like Gabriel or something like axed yeah. one in the chest and it was just like on the ground like sort of yeah gushing this crazy bright red blood and like stunned um and you know then someone drugged the, that person that human and yeah. it was just like the Owen Collie was just like lying on the ground and yeah. I forget the words but the, it was like I didn't think that humans would actually try to kill us yeah i and there was the the next line was so interesting it's like i didn't understand or i didn't realize how hard it would be to not kill the human in that moment mm. and that for me was mm. where i was like they actually had no idea like they really thought that it was just gonna be like uh maybe a little bad but not like yeah death yeah yeah that's oh that's super interesting i was remembering as you're saying that i was remembering moments earlier in the book during their like early experimentation with humans in isolation as they're like trying, what do humans do um were there moments when you realized that like humans would just attack them if a human saw them because they were so like different um and how like over time they had gradually learned this process of like introduction and like <laughs> um what's the word we like slowly introduce someone to like the hostile stimulants until it like no longer becomes like oh yeah yeah it's like a culture yeah acculturation um yeah so it seems like that they had kind of thoughts like through reading everything about human history and then like <laughs> deleting all and then experimenting with humans that like they got what humanity is yeah and like they could just once they understood that and they could just fix it <laughs> Yeah. It's like nah dog. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you knew. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah, you thought. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so that brings that that makes me think of like one of my biggest uh I don't know, one of the most interesting things I think Butler does in the book. I'm trying to find my notes on this. Um is just this really beautiful paragraph or two about difference. Um, I 
Okay, I'm feeling yeah, a little guilty it. that I'm like <laughs> using the copy of the book that you gave me. <laughs> like, come on, Reed, where's your book? <laughs> How come you don't have other line notes like I do? <laughs> um, I didn't actually write in it though. I just took like notes in another document. So you oh. didn't have this back. Uh, anyway, page 186. Um, Joseph says, I don't understand why the sight of you should scare me so. You don't look that threatening, just very different. And the Khan says, different is threatening to most species. Different is dangerous. It might kill you. That was true for your animal ancestors and your nearest animal relatives. And it's true for you. Yeah. And I was like, damn, if that is not the fucking yeah. human condition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. I think it's like that line, like totally it's a line earlier of, I can't remember what they exactly said of like, the biggest flaw in humanity is that like, you're hierarchical and your intelligence. And so you will just like destroy each other because yeah. you cannot deal with those two things are just incompatible. Totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, heard on, I heard that on a podcast one time. Um, I think it's a a poetry podcast called Verses, and there's this like dope black poet, like uh, I guess it's like a writing professor, poetry professor. Yeah, uh, I think he's in Detroit. Anyways, he was saying that that same thing, like hierarchy and intelligence are non-compatible <laughs> and you know i feel like i don't know i'm curious if you think or how those two things like intelligence and um hierarchy and this like mm -hmm. fear of difference thing like do you think those things those ideas connect to each other either in the book or just yeah. like in reality yeah, I think they do. I think like, I think fear of difference is like satiated when people are put within their hierarchy. So you can understand where like people who are different fit within the hierarchy. Like mm -hmm. no confusion about it. Um, and like, I think about like moments in the U.S. where there was like the most racial terrorism, racial violence, were moments when the serious threat to and actual changes in racial hierarchy, where like people were just like totally, like people were totally unsure where they fit. So like questioned, like do I, mm. like am I no longer better than black people now? Was basically what happened, and that like created the reign of like lynching, and, like racial terrorism itself. So like, yeah, I think it was like hand in glove, basically. Yeah. 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 Well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. 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 I really want to. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, where I want to go is like, great. So now that we know that, how do we deal with like racism? Yeah. Um, but before going there, I, you know, that it's what's really fascinating to me about hierarchy i mean as you say like when people are unsure of where they fit in the hierarchy that's what causes like chaos yeah. but what's crazy to me is that people can see themselves in a low like on a low rung of the hierarchy and be more okay than when they don't know where they are yeah like when poor white people understand themselves to be better than like all black people but way worse than any wealthier white people like that's fine yeah to people with yeah like that's crazy to me yeah and yet it is super like obviously that is the truth like that is the lived yeah. history um, yeah. you know and that shows up in all sorts of other yeah identity categories yeah. as well but like it 
so you know that like frustrates me and you know i think one other thought i have on that front is like uh the difference being scary like i guess i just want this is a weird thought i think when we figure out as a species how to make difference not scary like that's when we will like level up or whatever yeah um you know and there's a there's a spot in the book i can't remember where i think nikon just talking about why humans need to be drugged in order to go through the bonding process like the three-way bonding process also we should talk about that whole thing Yes. <laughs> like this, like threesome thing that <laughs> is just super normal. Yeah. Um, but in order to be okay on Earth, like Owen Kali have to drug humans, and it's really to help them get over the, that fear of difference. Yeah. And then, like the drugging falls away eventually. Yeah. Because once you like get over that hurdle, you don't need to be different. Like that fear is gone and you can be like yeah. a type of human. Um, and, you know, that's fascinating to me. And I wonder what that might look like for our species in reality. Yeah. Um, but I do really believe that it's possible for us to get over yeah. the fear of difference. And we just got to figure out how. Yeah, this makes me think of, oh, I just think of so much. Like one thing that really comes to mind is, like implicit bias and yeah. like all the space that's like policy space focused on implicit bias. Um, and this concern that like, you know, structural racism is so deeply embedded that like our very thoughts, regardless of like where we were born, whatever, our experiences lead us to implicit biases against people with darker skin. And like the darker the skin, the more like implicit bias you're gonna have. And like the, there's all these studies that shown that like people can overcome implicit bias like literally just through like positive experiences with each other like that's all it takes it's just like yeah incredible <laughs> like, oh, like grow up around black people or like have a friend or like multiple friends and like positive associations built up for a while yeah. and that can like change every way you think about the world totally wow. yeah I mean, that's exciting <laughs> yeah, it was exciting. And the one thing I was thinking about, like, with this hierarchy stuff, it's, like, I, I always go to, like, policy stuff, usually, because, like, I read so much of it. Read? <laughs> policy? <laughs> policy, sci-fi, nerd. <laughs> Not to make some handle out of that. Um, Yo. <laughs> <laughs> new Twitter handle. Yo, do it. Uh, so it's, like, this, there's been studies about, like, how we perceive how much we earn in wages relative to other people. And most people would be a lot um, more happy in a space where they are, for example, earning um, like $110,000 um, and the average in their firm is like $100,000 rather than a firm where they are earning $150,000 but the average in the firm is $180,000. So people, their value and how much they perceive themselves is not really connected to this thing of a wage, just yeah. to they fit within a hierarchy of wages. Yeah. Totally. Right. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Wow. Octavia. <laughs> just killing it. Just <laughs> killing it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean that the truth of that data resonates like I I totally understand that yeah yeah I get that it's, like, I, I can feel that understanding totally. I feel it like I feel it in my body <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean uh, so many thoughts just like about okay so if we know that that is the case like one, what do we do in the meantime when we haven't changed the systems to make it not necessary that that's the case? And then like, are there ways to just sort of rig 
the system. Like, you know, in the last part of the book, like they, Owen Kali send the humans to the training room. Yeah. And it looks just like earth, but it's not earth. Yeah. Like, can we just rig everyone's job? Like everyone's workplaces <laughs> so that everyone thinks that they're making like slightly above average. Yes. But actually everyone's making like $50,000 and that's totally what everyone needs. Oh, this guy told me the experiment doing this. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And then the other thought I had was, you know, yeah. what would happen if everybody just knew everyone else's individual wages? Like in all systems, like not just in a single work environment. Yeah. Like what if everybody knew everyone's wages across all workplaces? Like I think that would just cause like a wage war. Yeah. Yeah. I think people would freak out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, with this like hierarchy thing, it's well. I think we'll like carry it forward when we like keep reading other books and see how it keeps like coming up. Like yeah. said, like, this is obviously something that's gonna keep happening. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fascinated and terrified. Yeah, <laughs> like how she's gonna play with that shit. Um, so okay, so I have a bunch of notes, but yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, I have a ton of notes too. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, great. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about like this theme of Lilith's isolation. Hmm. So I was reflecting on the course of the book and how she's experienced so many different types of isolation um, and like what were her choices during each moment. Hmm. So there's her like utter solitude in this like lightless space that doesn't really feel like she's anywhere. Um, and she experiences that for years. And then she's like first introduced to the own cry or no, then she's first introduced to like a human child. So like that breaks her solitude. That child's taken away. Then she's introduced to the own cry. Yeah. And that's like, she feels like an even deeper level of solitude because she's in this like physical place. She's no idea where she's at, like still, I really block from the rest of like anything. It's just dark, but then it's like figure appears, and so she's like, I have no idea what where I'm like beyond solitude. Like I don't have a word for this because I'm like placeless, I'm, like rootless. Um, and then she is freed from that like her tree of captivity, basically, into this world, into the spaceship where she still is physically limited. So that's like a level of solitude, but she's surrounded by people that don't understand her, even though she has like much, much more contact. Um, but that contact is the most part is very meaningless for her. Mm. Um, so she has like this physical freedom, but no connection. Then she finally like starts to get connected to other humans. But these other humans, as a result of like changes to her and changes she experiences, don't really understand her and don't trust her anymore. And so she like, feels the solitude of I'm finally around people who should get me, but they don't get me anymore. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to be able to ever get me again because of how I've changed. Um, yeah. So I feel like this like solitude theme is just, it's like racking my brain. Mm. Because I'm trying to understand like at what point was her life, I don't know, what point was her life the most like rich and potential among all these different like mm. levels of solitude. Um, like what choices did she have? It like, would have been better for her to just, like stay among the own Kali without meeting other humans who could never understand her and just having a life where she's like kind of interacting with these foreign creatures and she has herself rather than being around all these people who utterly distrust her, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so this connects to what I want to talk about yeah. next, which is just like, um, what does it mean to be human? Yeah. Because that's what causes the distrust from the other humans. Um, so, you know, thinking about the choices she had in each stage, you know, that, that question that you posed, like, okay, so I'm going to like meta this a little bit and just talk about like Octavia Butler's books in general. Yeah. 
also so that I don't spoil things for you unintentionally and vice versa. Which yeah. of her books have you read? Which series? I've read the Parable series, the Parable of the Talents, Parable of the Sour. Yeah. Um, among the like, I can't remember what's called the Seed series. Uh, oh, um, the Pattern Master. Pattern Master. I've only read the first book. Okay. Um, Good and then I've read Kindred. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. So, at this point, you probably have experienced that, like, a lot of her characters are, um, like, survivors. Yeah. They're, like, all of her, like, protagonists. And everything I've read so far, like her, her protagonists are like black women. Um, like all of them have this like intense drive to survive. Yeah. And like they'll do whatever it takes. Um, you know, I think that probably comes from her life experience. Yeah. Being around black women. Um, but in each stage, you know, I think her. Um, I think Lilith's desire is just like whatever it takes to survive and give mm -hmm. myself the highest possibility to, I don't know if it's like be self-determining or just like live the life I want to live or if it's like get away from these fucking people or these, <laughs> whatever these bad things are that whatever the yeah. situation yeah. I'm in is, you know, an imparable of the, I think it's parable of the talents, you know, where they're just like enslaved. Yeah. They're like have these crazy ass collars on. Oh my God, that's the worst thing ever. <laughs> the absolute worst thing ever. Um, but, you know, the main character in that one, I forget, what's Lauren's daughter's name? Uh, I can't recall. Anyways. Yeah. Protagonist of book two. It's just like, yeah. doesn't matter. We're going to go through years. It's months or years of slavery until we can learn enough about our captors yeah. to like free ourselves. Um, you know, so I feel like in this book, Lilith, her whole thing is just like, oh, she has that phrase like learn and run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's just, she's like, yeah, I do whatever it takes to learn some shit step by step, stage by stage. And when yeah. I get a chance, I'll run. But until then, I'm just like going to learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. And still like really difficult fucking choices. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if I would have done, I don't know if I would have the courage to do some of the things that she did. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely needs, and it's clear, like, in this book and Parable of Towns, Parable of the Sour, that they both have, like, an inner, like, philosophy or North Star where they think they fade themselves and, like, humanity needs to go towards. And that is what, and it was in place to survive and, like, keep learning. There's no, no, like, they have to think that it's done. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like that vision of Earth Seed. You know, it's yeah. Like Earth Seed. I, I forget what it's like. The purpose of Earth Seed is to live the destiny of Earth Seed is to take like live stars. Stars. Yeah. 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 It was like, ooh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that I just you know, I'm trying to I've been learning a lot more about Octavia Butler lately and just thinking about her as like a little hermit or not a little She's like a tall person, um, like this hermit who's just like, yeah. in a crazy way, like surviving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like she's dead now, mm -hmm. but like she's also surviving. Mm -hmm. So she has like sort of fractaled her own reality. Yeah. Or yeah. like her own survival, which is kind of cool. Yeah.
Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Right? <laughs> like, all her main characters are writers. Yeah. I don't know about all of them, but, like, a lot of them. Um, you know, in this, in this series, there's a, a moment where I think, okay, I'm going to try this out. Kaguyat. Yeah. Is like, um, like, brings Lilith, like, a ream of paper and, like, pens. And so Lilith is in, like, you know, writing stuff down. And then there's another point where um, they bring Lilith, like, these uh, little profiles of all the humans that they could wake up, that she could wake up. Um, and she's, like, taking notes. Yeah. And this, like, drive to survive, however it takes, like, whatever it looks like. You know, I think in the book, it's, like, li- literally, like, living. For yeah. Them. I think Octavia Butler's just like, yeah, the way I'm going to survive is these fucking books. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, I uh, never put that together that all of her characters were writers. Huh? I, I hadn't before put that together that all the characters are writers in some way or another. Yeah. You know, and I, I haven't like, that's not like a Michelin approved <laughs> or like, sci-fi nerds of the world uh, approved but (laughs) from what i can remember like everybody has some way that they need to write or keep records yeah um i'm trying to remember oh i'm i don't want to spoil anything in the pattern master series but um there is some cool stuff with writing in that series Mm. Mm. yeah and, yeah, like Kindred, definitely a writer. Like, it, one of the most important things it is for her to, like, take into the past and back is, like, pens and paper from the back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay, so this human question. As you were saying, you know, eventually when she, when Lilith gets around a bunch of other humans, they're one of the reasons they're afraid of her is because they're like, you're not human anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, and the shit that has happened to her, all of it, or almost all of it, Nikanj has done. And it's like chemical, it's like biochemical changes, like yeah. making her able to heal herself faster, making her stronger, um, giving her the capacity to, uh, remember everything like to she he gave or yeah. it, it gave her like an eidetic memory um you know and then there's the the scene where she can like i was just like i imagine this so hard she's like rubbing her hand along the wall and like yeah. feeling where the human is in the wall oh yeah and like pulls it out and like pulling the human out yeah i'm gonna have some yeah. wicked nightmares about that <laughs> um you know, so like Nikanj has given her all these crazy abilities. Um, and the other people say like, oh, you're less human. Yeah. So one of the podcasts that I listened to called On Being, the host of that show, Krista Tippett, one of her main questions, the questions he asked at almost every end, the end of almost every interview is like, what have you learned from your work, dear interviewee? about what it means to be human and Mm. so like you know i hear that answered by by someone weekly Mm. um and you know she talks to like philosophers yeah astrophysicists geologists musicians teachers writers like people from all over the spectrums um and you know octavia and this has done a really fascinating yeah like, dig into like okay so when does a human cease to be human yeah um, so i have more thoughts but i'm curious like how have you how did you like roll with that going through the yeah this book wow yeah my immediate reflection is like, 
is how often Lilith shows her own uh, humanity by demonstrating her understanding of humanity and her quest to like <laughs> restore humanity. I'll, I'll break that down a little bit. So like yeah. when you're talking about the moment where she's presented with all the profiles of different people, yeah, uh, she has to decide who like awakens first. And like each one, she has a very like specific analysis of this person um, based upon the person's general profile, but also how that profile connects to like general uh, like learn behaviors and socialization of humans um, that would affect how that person would wake up and interact with her. So like she couldn't first wake up an, a man. That was like out of the question, like male body person. Yeah. That was like a first reaction. And like that was like a very validated experience and probably made possible everything else, like everything else waking up other people. She had to first wake up a woman. Um, and I think also like a bunch of moments where she yeah, she just like displayed other instincts of knowing how humans would see her non-humanness, non-humanness allowed her to keep surviving. And she had to like at a particular moment take the plunge. She's like, okay, this is the moment where I have to show people that I where are all my non-human abilities. And it was that like critical moment that she knew something could like go terribly wrong and that they could no, no longer trust her and they end up not trusting her. But like yeah. she knew humanity enough to like understand all these like key pivotal moments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is also a common theme across Octavia's like protagonists. Yeah. Um, so you choose yeah. Survive, you have to get other humans understand them. Yeah, you have to be like deeply understanding. You know, yeah. I'm thinking about um, shit. What's the the main character in Earth Seed? Or I mean, excuse me, in um, uh, what's the first Pattern Master book? Wild Seed. Wild Seed. Yeah, I can't it's been a while. Um, it's like Doro and fuck. Anyways, <laughs> um. You know, even though that character is like clearly not human, yeah. like it's 400 years or maybe thousands of years old. No, I think that character is hundreds of years old, like 400 years. Um, like the way that she survives is by acclimating herself to like whatever local human culture there is. Yeah. Like fitting herself in. It's like, okay, well, I'm the medicine woman. Yeah. So like people come to me for healing or whatever, but it's, the reason she's able to do this because she like gets what a human yeah. society needs. Um, so it's interesting that that's like a theme across her protagonist. Yeah. You have to yeah. be deeply understanding of what it means to be human, even if you don't see yourself as human or you're literally yeah. not human. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's exact. I mean, as you said it, like, like perfectly in the parable series as well. Um, oh, interesting. Like, the way Lauren is able to survive, like, living on the road is having, like, a razor-sharp instinct of every single person she meets mm. and how they get their potential, like, threats and capacities. Totally. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, the next thing I want to talk about is just, like, yeah. the way that that can backfire. Yeah. Um, or the moments where it sort of backfires. But uh, one other thing just on this humanness, like I just wanna talk out between us, like, okay, so the things that I remember in this book making Lilith not human are actually things that we are doing like real life to ourselves and each other, like all the time. Mm -hmm. So like, Hmm. Uh, maybe not directly but in like extension of individual human ways so yeah. well that's not also 
true. Anyways, okay, I'm swimming in my thoughts, so I'm just gonna like put yeah, the yeah. concrete things out there. Number one, uh, strength. Like Mikanj makes a little extra strong, um, and we do that in our species with like steroids. Yeah, like there's a whole career, i.e., bodybuilding. Yeah, that is designed specifically for people to like do things to their bodies that their bodies yeah. couldn't do without assistance. Um, you know, and some people would say like top tier athletes, i.e., Olympians. Like the big thing is like, are they going to get caught doping? Yeah, and like almost everyone does it. The question is, or not, not almost everyone. Like a lot of people do it. The question there is like, did you get caught or not? Mm. Um, but like people revere those. Yeah. We revere those bodies. Like as a society, we use like we culturally hold central those bodies. And we definitely revere like athletes. Like the whole world goes nuts over the World Cup. These are like top performing athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, but like in this book, it's like being extra strong makes you not human. Yeah. Or having superhuman strength. Yeah. Is it also like the memory thing? I think a lot about kids who are growing up with their parents having smartphones. Mm-hmm. And we're just like documenting everything about these kids' lives. Mm-hmm. Like they won't literally have the memories in their heads, but like I I'm watching my friends' kids grow up on Facebook yeah. from ages like zero to five at this point. Oh, yeah. seven or eight. So like those kids are going to be able to look back at the internet and see their mem- like see themselves. Yeah. So like that's interesting. And then wait, what was the thing? Is strength, memory? Oh, healing. Yeah, healing. Like we are making what some people call deep advances in like medical technology, um, where we're prolonging individual lifespans in wealthier countries you know far beyond life expectancy outside of western yeah medicine um but like are old people who have had cancer treatment and then surgeries less human like we literally put metal in people's bodies yeah and replace their knees their hips we give them pacemakers to keep their hearts working I don't know. I'm curious what you think about like, okay, so where is the line between human and not human or where are the lines? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure about a lot of thoughts on this, but I'm fascinated by this idea of at once people being obsessed with non, seemingly non-human abilities um, and at the same time being terrified by like, non-humanness. The example of athletes, I think, is perfect with this. Um, and it's like, obviously, like, next to like, things about, like body image and other things. Um, I think sometimes you see that, like, those ten- that tension, like, playing out in, like, one big body. Like, it's like, yeah, being superhuman and like not at the same time. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about the horses we thought about that, but I think. I mean, that's a good thought. Yeah. That's an interesting yeah. thought like, to connect those things that are seen as extremes. I was yeah. just thinking of, of them as just like separate. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, no, people are both obsessed and terrified at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. There are actually so many other things. I have one more thing I want to talk about. Yeah. Is there like one more thing you want to? Yeah, I have one more thing also. So maybe we just do like a, a lightning round. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's this uh, basically what happens, you know, when Lilith reveals some of her non-humanness is it like makes people terrified mm-hmm. to the point that 
they understand that she's not human and so they won't kill her. Yeah. But they hurt people around her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's also true in Octavia's other books. Mm. Like specifically I'm thinking about Parable of the Talents where like people will just attack people around the main character. Mm. Uh, so like, you know, I guess I'm, I'm just thinking about, okay, so like this is basically witch hunts. Like this is the, an age old phenomenon. Like what do you yeah. do with witch hunts? Do, and I guess I mean, if you're a witch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So you're saying that like people, like both Lilith and Lauren, because they have these non-human or superhuman abilities. And like Lilith and Lauren's case is kind of for like extreme emotional um, intelligence. That yeah, right. like being an right. empath. Yeah, an empath. Like, like feel other people's Everything. things literally in her body. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, drug induced. Exposes people around her to like harm because of this particular ability. Yeah. Just like, how do you deal with yeah. that as the witch? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. In, yeah. So in both, there's different approaches, I think, that we see in both the books. So in Lilith's case, like she knows at some point she has to reveal these abilities and she has to do everything she possibly can to anticipate all of the potential reactions and all of the like the contingencies to make a plan for each thing mm. um in lauren's case um being an empath and potential to like harm people around her it's just she has to do everything she possibly can to hide this ability and the more she can hide it the better she can protect people around her yeah so, like the rules are too interesting Two different approaches. I'm not sure if they're like extremes, but I think there's like two different ways. I'm wondering if there are other ways to approach it that like Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. I had never thought about that. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. All right, that was my question. Or that was my thing. What's your other thing? Yeah. Um, yeah, so because I've also been reading I just finished the parable series. Um like the theme of ecological disaster is so clear in both um, uh, like the sweet senses of Lilith and Lauren and that like for the humans um, in Don it was a nuclear war that like, almost wiped them out and then they were like well, you know saved by the <laughs> Juan, yeah. Juan Cali. Yeah. Um, for Lauren it was just the slow like variation of the environment um, in the way that like could really happen in our reality. Um, I guess maybe the war is also pretty potential in our reality as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, <fuck>. um, <laughs> but what's amazing to me is like she was writing this stuff as a like as a black woman in like the eighties and nineties. Yeah. And so it's like way beyond like for time in terms of mainstream consciousness of environmental change. Yeah. But, but she also writes it with a sophistication that I think mainstream environmentalism has just caught up to in yeah. terms of connecting environmental change with like social and economic change and how those three combined are disastrous. And you can't disinvest address like environmental change alone, which is like what environmental struggles with forever when it's a bunch of like free activists, like trying to get, I don't know, people of color to like recycle more or something. Yeah, like save polar bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah, what like, the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I like into weave all these three things together. Like she definitely is able to writing like 15 years ago. And that is just, I think, like incredible to her like foresight into the condition of like 
the U.S. and like capitalism yeah. and like racism, and I, 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 I this like blows my mind. <laughs> I just like sit with it and like feel it. So I'm like, oh my gosh, how did you? <laughs> yeah. How are you doing this? Yeah. Like, do people people really appreciate? Like, all people should be appreciating what you wrote. Are they out there appreciating this? <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers, are y'all awake? <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, this book has made me think very differently about the word away. Mm. Mm. That's like a whole nother thing, but just like capital A awakeness. Mm. Um, yeah, like, anyways, not going down that road. Yeah. <laughs> I very much like so this book was, this book is copyright 1987. Mm. Wow. Which is just nuts. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's really brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like one of the ways that she, I can't remember where she talks about this. Um, there's a book of short stories she wrote called Blood Child. Mm. Or, yeah, I, I, think it's a, I think it's the name of the book. It's also the name of one of the short stories. But she wrote the book, and after each short story, there's like a little note from the author that's like, here's what I was thinking mm. when I wrote this story. Or like, here's the themes that I tried to weave in. Like, here was the question I was exploring, or here's the fear of my own that I was, like, yeah, playing with. Um, so I think it's in one of those, like, follow-up notes where she just talked, like, she, she says that the interweaving of these themes just comes naturally because the future isn't actually that hard to predict if mm. you're paying attention. Mm. The problem is most people aren't paying attention. Mm. And she's like, I just take shit that's happening right now. Yeah. And I pull it like, a, like I pull these threads sort of into the future. Yeah. And then like weave them together. Yeah. And it, gives, it gives me this world that people think is insane. Yeah. But like it's all rooted in what's happening right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's how I definitely, how I think the parable series got yeah. to be so you know it like blew up when yeah. 45 got elected because people yeah. were like oh my god make america great again was in this book written 25 <laughs> yeah. 30 years ago yeah and i could have just imagined octavia being like i mean <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, i don't know what y'all thought was gonna happen she's <laughs> <laughs> It's like that's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like that. That's the easy thing. Yeah. The yeah. hardship is these tentacle aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's really masterful, brilliant. Just like yeah. ridiculous. Um. Okay, I don't realize it's been like an hour. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, we should probably wrap this. But I'm curious if you have like, okay, actually, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. So one thing is like, what implication does this book have on your life? Yeah. Or like, what do you, what, impl what impact do you want it to have on your life? And the other is mm -hmm. um, like, where, mm -hmm. I don't know, what are you most excited about in the next book? Mm -hmm. I think implication in my life going back to uh, like the three faces of power analysis with three dimensions of power I think Octavia in this book like so clearly shows what the most terrifying stream of like a third face of power could be mm -hmm. and it's just a reminder to me to always be like constantly assessing and reassessing where my own thoughts and beliefs come from um mm. and like what's at the, the core of it um and i think like i've had a lot of like awakenings and consciousness building um by 
over like the years reassessing like where my police come from. Um, so moving forward, like that's something I just want to keep always remembering. Um, excited about for next book. Whoa, I'm really excited. So many things. Well, his name too. The like splitting off that happens when there's successful like gene matching or pairing, if you remember what they call it, where like one ship goes to another place, one ship like goes I think like back to the home world or something, like one ship stays. I'm really excited for that scene, like when that happens. And I'm really excited to, to see like what happens with the humanity that gets carried off. Yeah. And into the humanity that stays on Earth. Yeah. Like they, I feel like that we forget about that humanity, like they could be totally fucked. <laughs> like uh, they could be the ones we're really super concerned about. Okay. So yeah. How about you? Nice. Um, the you know, the biggest implication I want this to have on my life or like I guess you know, to your point about Octavia predicting the future. I'm yeah. just like, yo, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> like just what's happening in my life that I am not okay reframe I want to be paying attention so much so that the things that I'm seeing now like I could predict 30 years out hmm. where it's going to be um, hmm. I mean obviously you can't really do or I don't know I can't say obviously you can't do that because she did it but like you know I just want to be both paying attention and, you know, maybe like I've been writing sci-fi. So like, maybe I want to be writing about the things I'm paying attention to. Mm. And maybe it's just like a numbers game. It's like, all right, if I put out a hundred stories, three of them are going to be on point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I feel like it's less about predicting the future and just like, understanding what's coming at you as it's coming at you yeah it's not like imagining this thing that is far away yeah you know the seeds of the future are already here so yeah I pay attention to them anyways like i want to i, I want to be paying more attention like i want to be awake in like the lilith like type of awake um and the shit i'm most excited about i mean i'm really excited and terrified to know what this first child is going to be like oh um, yeah like <laughs> um, and i also really want to know like what happens when some of the humans run yeah because they have this like learn and run motif and yeah. the owen Kali obviously know that the humans are going to run like they talk about it in that yeah. last chapter they're like yeah we know some of y'all are going to run away we'll give you the yeah. tools we want to give you the freedom to come back yeah but if they don't come back like fuck them yeah <laughs> but like what happens when they do that like do they yeah. just die do they eventually be able to like create more humans that mm. are non-alien humans mm. anyway yeah like fascinated mm. by that whole, the whole situation Hmm. Cool. Oh, this is so good. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, what, I'm really excited. How are we gonna do this? What's our plan? Yeah, I think I have to get the book first. Same. Um, <laughs> Same. Same. I don't know. Maybe we can just like check in with where we are at in like a a week or two. I'm not sure what your your time frame is like. I'm gonna go. I'm going home next week. I'm probably gonna have a lot of free time in my hands. Okay. Um, yeah. What do you? Um, so I have some uh, travel coming up, and I think, like, regardless, yeah. I could commit to being done by uh, like. I could commit to being done in about a month. Okay. Like four weeks from now, I could definitely commit to being done. Yeah. Between now and then, it's like a little. Yeah. Iffy. Yeah. Not iffy. I just like I'm not totally sure because like I'm out of town this weekend, yeah. starting the week after that. Um. Yeah, that sounds great. Oh, so, one month, like one, around one month now. Yeah. Like, 
plan for a month and then we can just like check in by text about where we are. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Last thing. So clearly we recorded this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, should we post it somewhere? I think we should. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, do you have a YouTube account? I don't know. Do you have one? I don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. And we'll just like post it on YouTube and be like, hey, this, we did this thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to read this book with us. Like, feel free. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's got to be someone out there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. Well, this was a great. Good to talk to you. Yeah, it's good to talk to you too. Thanks so much for around to this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. All, All right. right. Well, have a good night. You too. Peace. Uh, see ya.